Being raised as a Christian, I noticed mass amounts of hypocrisy and a lot of hate towards other religions. In this video, I'm going to show you a bizarre Christian cult that went around molesting children in the name of Christ. And I'm not saying that all Christians are bad because they're not. I'm saying there's false teachers within every religion and groups or clubs. This is David Brandt Berg. He died on October 1st, 1994. He was the leader of the Family International. He was also a serial child molester slash pedophile. This is Karen Zerby, his wife. She has since remarried since his death. She has gone by numerous aliases such as Maria, Maria David, Mama Maria, and more. And like her deceased ex-husband David Berg, she too is a serial child molester slash pedophile and is now the new leader of the family international cult. This is her new husband who refers to himself as King Peter. He used to refer to the former cult leader David Berg who has since passed as father or dad whom was married to Karen Zerby whom he is now married to so technically he's married to his mom. No matter what difficulties we face or what goes wrong or right on this earth we have a God who loves each of us and will go to any lengths to care for us and to keep us close to his heart of love. There's one thing that will never become outdated the need to love and be loved. She thinks that molesting children is love. And yes, for her, that will never become outdated. She is a walking venereal disease. She is a self-admitted prostitute for Christ, which she refers to as flirty fishing. The child in this photo next to David Berg is her son, Rick Rodriguez. She and David Berg, along with many others, took turns molesting Rick Rodriguez throughout his whole life. This is Rick Rodriguez as an adult right before he killed one of the female pedophiles that helped his mother and David Berg molest him, aka Angela Smith, formerly known as Susan Joy Calton. Shortly after that, he took his own life. Suicide. Horrible. Horrible thing when adults contemplate suicide. But so much worse when you got a fucking little kid who is, you know, not born to be a messed up little fucker, but he's a little life, you know? She's a little life. And you just fuck him over because you're a sick fucking pervert and you don't have anything better to do with your life than to fuck up your little kids. It's just... So far beyond me, I just... This is one of the websites that Karen Zerby, the leader of the Family International, runs where they still maintain access to children to this very day. One of the last things they believe a children has a right to is to be in a safe environment and to be protected from harm and danger. Why our government has ceased to do anything about this is beyond me. This website is still active. How did I figure out Christian cult members are running an underground sex ring? Believe it or not, I seen it in a PBS documentary. I'm going to show you a 10 minute edited clip from said documentary. The church is also the setting for early revelations in the boy's life. Ones that Berg will later write about when he has become a prophet. I will never forget that I was taught how to masturbate by an older boy who whispered it in my ear during one of my father's Sunday morning sermons. Later, David's mother catches him masturbating. She forces him to complete the deed in front of his father. David Berg's perverted mother's name was Virginia Lee Brandt Berg from West Virginia related to General Robert E. Lee, Confederate Civil War General. According to some scholars, the David of Ezekiel is the harbinger of the fiery end of the world. David Berg now proclaims that he is in fact this biblical prophet. How does he know? God told him so. Berg's daughter, Faithy, ends up evangelizing in Libya. While explaining the love of Jesus to a devout Muslim, 
she somehow ends up in bed with the man. Of course, I had never, ever had sex with anybody that um, I wasn't married to. And I had never had sex <clears throat> with anybody that was um, what I would consider a heathen. <laughs> <laughs> and then my father said, why, it's exactly the same day we got this prophecy. We called the flirty fish. Berg's vision seems divinely inspired. What else but sex could save souls and feel so good all at the same time? Flirty fishing is the name Berg gives this new path to salvation. Later, Berg will call this missionary work simply FFing. My pretty little fishes, would you do anything for Jesus to help your fishermen catch souls, even suffer the crucifixion of the hook or the danger of the trap? Think it over. How far would you go? All the way. And it started to become pretty big news. This, this particular club started to have a lot of people come to it. People were, heard about it in Scandinavia and Germany, and people were flying there. To, to see about these girls who made love to men and told them about Jesus. The man you're looking at now is Karen Zerby's new husband, King Peter. Anxious to spread the good news of FFing, Berg begins publishing his Mo letters. These instruct his disciples on everything from his obsession with cleanliness to how to make love to a fish. They also chart an unambiguous trail into the inner workings of the prophet's mind. I think he believed whatever he felt, whatever he thought, whatever his inclination was, that that was God. Even if he was drunk at the time, that that was the Lord. Well, I did it, so it must be the Lord. I don't think he left the door open to the fact that the devil could be speaking to him and leading him into any of these areas at all. Much of the deeper revelations that I had received from the Lord was so in the spirit that I was not even conscious of what was happening, and afterwards I had to be told what had been said. All I know is, this is the way God speaks to me, and has from the beginning. And I am only a messenger boy who delivers his telegrams. And I am not responsible for what has been said or revealed. You have to blame God for that, or thank him. Certainly the numbers seem to indicate Berg is on to something. Membership in the children of God is growing rapidly, and flirty fishing, not unexpectedly, is proving to be a recruitment boom. By 1982, close to half a million souls have been FF'd. One in eight accepts the Lord. My sexy little fishes are doing the job. They tease them flirt with them, then screw them until they drop. That's the way to bring them to the Lord. Forget all that old-fashioned gospel preaching. We're six times more effective than Billy Graham. Praise the Lord. It's hard to understand why I could be set so dumb, but I wanted so badly to believe that this was God's will because it had some flash of being exceptional. But somewhere in the middle of it, your heart just goes, this can't be right. There's something wrong, but you've got yourself locked into a concept of, but he can't be wrong. Is that stupid or what? Hundreds of thousands of people were, were met the Lord that way. And, and I'm pretty convinced that when we get to heaven, and those people are in heaven. We're not going to be hanging our head in shame that we FF those people into heaven. I think those people are going to come and kneel down and say, thank you for doing it. Berg is finding fewer and fewer places to hide. He is drinking heavily, and his Mo letters, written at a furious pace, are becoming increasingly bizarre and revealing. Goddamn churches and all that theoretical. Was a 17th century French soldier raping the Queen of England. It wasn't a goddamn Jews, those antichrist Christ. He sees conspiracies everywhere, 
especially amongst the Jews and the blacks. That's genius. He counsels mothers to masturbate their young sons to sleep. He constantly berates the churches for being bastions of hypocrisy. He chronicles as many sexual adventures in lurid detail, including being seduced by ancient spirit goddesses, who look surprisingly contemporary. I say, what's wrong? French Cabernet Sauvignon. One of Berg's few regrets, he says, is that he never slept with his mother. Now, Dad personally was a sexy guy, and he would, you know, he would hug the girls and kiss them, and they, he would have sex with them. It, it wasn't just sex for sex; it was love. What he did, he did in love, and the girls wanted to be with him. And the dad said, well, look, why don't you try to do some erotic sort of dances? Well, let's try that out and see what it's like. And, and so they did some. And it was sweet. I mean, they did them for dad. And, but he sort of gave, coached them how to do it. He said, well, have the sarong on you. And then towards the end, you can let it down and raise your hands up and praise to God. And he wrote some letters like glorify God in the dance. For dad, it was very sweet because dad didn't see the family. Dad didn't go visit homes and didn't have a lot of visitors to the home. So this was a way for him to see family members. But he was very appreciative. I admire the girls for doing that. It's, you know, when you look around, you've got video lights and video camera, and you've got to get up there and, and dance like that. Uh, it takes a bit of humility, I'd say. Joan came to me and she said, well, Dad suggested that I make love to him in the latest comment tape. Uh, do you think I should masturbate? And said, I said, of course, that sounds beautiful. And on the first take, I was masturbating to you. And um, when I came, I broke out in strong tongues. I couldn't control it. And uh, the last few words were, Father, I love you. We didn't look at it as any kind of sexual thing. Not with the little kids, for sure. Dad certainly did. And it was like dress up. You know, they saw their moms putting on beads and putting on a sarong and putting their hair up, and they wanted to do the same thing, and they did. Minnie, who was Dad's granddaughter, came to live with us when she was about 12. And I remember very clearly Dad talking to us about her coming. And he said, look, this is my granddaughter. And I haven't seen her since she was, I don't know, one or two years old. And I want to take care of her. Meanie lives with Berg for four years, during which time she suffers several mental breakdowns. Not knowing how to handle her, the family tries non-traditional means. We believe in exorcism. We believe in laying hands and praying for people. And we did that for her sometimes. And, and there were times when we did pray for her that she had, you know, for a few months was doing fine. But then she would relapse into it. Later, Mini will accuse her grandfather of sexual abuse. The prophet's vision of heaven is a pyramid 1,500 miles on each side. There will be singing water, dancing colors. People will be able to walk through walls and fly. Aren't you glad you're going to be there? <laughs>